Alright, Wes dealer, everyone vulnerable. Okay, Wes has a balanced 8 count, 4-4 four, four in diamonds and spades. Nothing exciting to do here. Nice and easy start. Now to North. Oof, North has nearly got an opening hand. Uh, North has 10 points, which is not normally an opening hand, but we've got 5-4. So rule of 20 here would get us 5 plus 4 is 9, plus our 10 points is 19. We're one short. Um, would I open this hand? No, it doesn't meet the rule of 20, but not only that, this singleton king of clubs isn't actually worth its full weight, if you like. A singleton king is not often worth as much as three because the ace kills it. Um, if the king was in spades, I'd be more tempted to open the hand, but I probably still wouldn't. Uh, yeah, so obey the rule of 20 and pass. Now to east. Aha, the opening hand. Uh, what have we got? 12, 14 points. Uh, perfectly balanced, 4 3 3 3, super balanced. Um, playing Akol, one no trump opening is 12 to 14 points, and a balanced hand, which is exactly what we have, so that's the correct bid. One no trump. Now to South. South has got eight points. Um, we've not really got anything good enough to say over one no trump. Our clubs aren't good enough to bid them at the two level. We haven't got enough points to bid two clubs. Uh, we can't make a double because double will be penalty, so yeah, straightforward pass. Uh, partners own one no trump, 12 to 14 balanced. We have eight points and a balanced hand. Um, we could try Stamen if we bid two clubs. Uh, our partner hopefully bids two spades and then we find a spade fit. But you shouldn't try Stamen if you can't tolerate going back to two no trumps. Uh, or, or if you've got a five card suit to run out to. That's also another alternative uh, known as weak Stamen. Um, we have neither of those things. So if we bid two clubs as Stamen and our partner does not bid two spades, we are in trouble. We're going to have to bid two no trumps and that's simply too high with only 20 to 22 points between the two hands. Um, so, with, with 0 to 10 and a balanced hand, we should be passing. Right, so whenever you're defending against a 1-0 trump opening, um, it's quite common to play conventions as your overcalls. You could just play pure natural overcalls, so two clubs is clubs, two diamonds is diamonds, there's nothing wrong with that system. Um, but quite a lot of players play different systems. There's all sorts of different overcalling systems. Uh, just to name a few, there's Becker, Capaletti, Aspro, Landy, Multilandy, just to kind of reel a few off. Um, my personal favourite system of overcalls, if you are going to play a convention, uh, is something known as Aspro. So Aspro, basically, you use clubs to show hearts and another suit, and you use diamonds to show spades and another suit. Um, it's a way of getting a hand in where you've got 5-4 with a major as one of your 5 or 4. Um, if you play Landy with this hand, you could show both majors, that would work. Uh, if you play Capaletti or Becker, I'm sure there's bids that cover these hands. If you play Natural, there's no way to show a two-suited hand, you would just bid hearts. Um, so there's all sorts of different bids we could make here. I'm going to assume we're playing Aspro, because that's the system I like. Um, so playing Aspro, it shows 5-4 in spades and another suit, or 5-4 in hearts and another suit. We actually have either way around here. We could bid spades and another suit, or we could show hearts and another suit. Uh, for reasons that will take forever to explain, uh, we, with a 5-4 you should show spades and another suit, show your shorter suit, so when your partner asks you for your longer suit, you then show your 5 card suit, and that will then show your true shape. So here we want to show spades and another suit, our partner is likely to ask what our 5 card suit is, and we then should bid hearts, which will show the true shape. If we do it the other way, we show hearts and another suit, and then our partner asks us what our 5 card suit is, and we bid hearts, they are unaware of what our second suit is. So the correct way to do this, if you're playing Aspro, is bid two diamonds. That shows spades and another suit. Five, four in either way around. We could have five spades and four of another, or four spades and five of another. Our partner will then bid spades, or they'll bid no trumps, or they'll ask us for our five card suit, and then we can complete our kind of two bid plan, if you like, using Aspro. So this will be the bid playing Aspro. Two hearts will be the bid playing natural. Two clubs will be the bid playing multi landy or landy. So there's all different options here. Uh, I'm going to say we're playing Aspro just because it's probably the trickiest one to do in this particular example. Uh, East has passed. They've shown 12 to 14 balance. They've got nothing to say over two diamonds. So now it's to South responding to this Aspro bid. So first of all, you've got to remember it's Aspro. Uh, if you thought that was natural, you'd pass. Uh, so you've got to remember our partner has shown spades and another suit. Um, so they've got at least four spades. They're five, four in spades and another. They could have four spades and five of another, or five spades and four of another. They could even be five, five in some extreme cases. Um, almost always five, four though. So we need to know what's their five card suit. If their five card suit spades, we'll let them play in spades. If their five card suit hearts, clubs, or diamonds, we'll let them play in that. So when you're playing Aspro, the bid directly above your partner's Aspro bid asks them what is your five card suit? What is your true shape? So if they bid two uh, diamonds, two hearts says, what is your five card suit? If they bid two clubs, which is also Aspro, then two diamonds would say, what is your five card suit? 
And we, we use that so that they can then essentially return to the natural way of bidding, bidding their five card suit first, showing them their four card suit second. The advantage of Aspro is that if we did have four cards in spades, we could support the spades now, and we don't even need to know whether they've got five or four spades. In this instance, we can't support spades, so therefore we need to ask them, what's their five card suit? If they bid spades, hearts, clubs or diamonds, we'll let them play in any of them, because we don't mind, really. I mean, we don't really like spades, but, you know, they bid two spades, we're going to have to deal with it. So the correct bid here is two hearts, and two hearts, playing the Aspro convention, says, what is your five card suit? So Sal's come back with the inquiry bid, also uh, sometimes referred to as a relay bid, passing it back to us, asking for more info. Um, that means they don't have four cards in spades. We've shown at least four spades with this bid. If they had four spades, they would support spades. So that means they're looking for our five card suit. If our five card suit was spades, we would have to bid two spades here and say, yeah, sorry, our five card suit is spades. Um, as it is, our five card suit is hearts. Now interestingly, because our partners bid two hearts, we actually don't have to bid here because two hearts is our five card suit. So the only chance we've got of a fit is in the heart suit. So it would be pointless to bid three hearts when we, we strongly suspect slash no game isn't on. Um, so we might as well play in two hearts. And in fact, by passing our partner's relay bid, it's exceptionally unusual to pass what is an artificial bid. The reason we're passing it is because that's the bid we want to make. We want to bid two hearts to show our five hearts four spades. Instead, we're going to pass the two-heart bid and let our partner play in, five, uh, play in two hearts, which is better than spades. And it's better than spades because we know they haven't got four spades. Because if they did have four spades, they would have bid spades here. So I'm going to pass this two-heart bid, which is unusual. You don't normally pass an artificial bid, but it shows our true shape of five hearts, four spades. So two hearts uh, gets passed out, and South ends up as the surprise declarer. North has the heart suit, but yet because South bid hearts as the relay, South is actually going to be the declarer. And I bet they didn't expect to be declaring hearts in this hand, but anyway. Um, so looking to the lead, uh, we've got a few options really. We could lead Jack-10 of Trumps, although we have got Trump shortage, so it's not often good to lead Trump shortage. Um, other than that, we could lead low from spades, saying low like. We could lead low from diamonds, saying low like. Or we could lead middle or low, depending on whether you treat the jack as an honor or not, saying low like in clubs. Um, we could palpably, realistically, you could lead any, any one of these four suits. Um, the reason I would lead a low diamond is because I don't really like leading shortage in trumps. I don't want to lead a spade because this hand has shown spades. So I don't really want to lead a spade which is suggested that they have strength here. I don't really want to lead a club because leading from jack 8 7 won't often yield you any tricks, although the 7 of clubs wouldn't be unreasonable. Uh, I'm going to lead a low diamond, low like, and hope our partner's got good cards in diamonds. So I'm going to opt for the 3 of diamonds, but 7 of clubs is, is a close second for me. Okay, down goes North's dummy. Okay. So, looking uh, to set up the dummy, we're looking to establish the dummy because that has the longest trumps. It's almost always easier to set the dummy up when they have longer trumps than you. Um, we weren't expecting to be in two hearts, but hey-ho, they happen to have hearts, so now we're the Clara. Um, so, looking at dummies losers, establishing this hand as the high hand, we've got no losing hearts, hopefully, unless the hearts break badly. Um, we've got a couple of losing spades, queen and king might be losers. Uh, three losing diamonds off the bat, nothing we can do about that. And a losing club for definite. The ace of clubs will squash the king. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six potential losers. So we need to reduce those losers um, by at least one to try and make our contract. And the way we're going to be able to do that is to try and trump some of these spades in this hand. And we're going to be essentially trumping in the short holding. Um, to do that, we need to play the ace of spades, clear the jack of spades, let them win the queen or king. Trump a spade, go back to the dummy somehow, and trump another spade. That way we'll reduce our losers from, in spades from 2 to 1. We've also got really good integrity in spades, suit quality, 10, 9, 8 and the jack. So it might be that the 10 eventually becomes a winner because the ace and the jack gets rid of the queen and we manage to trump the king out, for example. Um, so yeah, watch out for these spades might become, maybe possibly becoming winners. But for now, our, uh, our plan looks to be to be trumping uh, two spades, reducing our spade losers from here from 2 to 1. That's, that's our hope. Um, if we do that, we'll lose one, two, three, four, five tricks, and we will just about scrape home in our two-heart contract. Nothing we can do about the first three tricks in diamonds, nothing we can do about the ace of clubs, we've just got to rough these spades. We've basically got to not draw the trumps and hope the opponents don't draw trumps for us, because we need at least two trumps here to be able to rough both those spades. So for now, we're playing low on this diamond trick, we're basically powerless in the diamonds and clubs, we're hoping the opponents don't lead trumps for us uh, to stop us roughing these, uh, these spades. So low diamond for now.
Okay, so a low diamond lead from their partner. From this defender's perspective, the three of diamonds is the lowest diamond missing, because they see the two on the dummy, and low typically means like. Um, so what that suggests is that they have an honour. If we look, we've got the ace, queen and jack on show, ace, queen in hand and jack on the dummy, which means our partner basically must have the king of diamonds. Um, there's a, there's a, a kind of a very small chance they've led low from three small, or they've got a singleton diamond, but that's quite unlikely. Um, it's quite likely our partner has the king of diamonds. So what we want to do is cash our diamond suit out. So we want to take the ace of diamonds. You could argue we'll play the queen, but take the ace just in case this is a singleton diamond, albeit it's unlikely. And everyone plays a low diamond. So now we want to continue the diamonds because we think our partner has the king of diamonds. There is a risk to play the queen of diamonds. If our partner doesn't have the king of diamonds, we're setting the jack up. But we're essentially trusting their three of diamonds lead that promised an honor. We're trusting them. Uh, which is what you have to do sometimes. So, Queen of Diamonds, which wins the trick. And hey presto, we were right, our partner does have the King of Diamonds. So that's the first two diamond tricks. So now we want to cash another diamond, or rather lead another diamond to our partner's king in the hope it cashes, in the hope that the remaining diamonds are split, which indeed they are. As declarer, there's nothing you can do, just follow suit and be upset that they're winning diamonds. So King of Diamonds comes, and the Jack of Diamonds, so we've lost the first three tricks. Not much we can do about that, I'm afraid. Uh, this defender's now on lead, so they've got to find a, a lead, an exit card if you like. They can't lead a diamond, that's not safe, because the declarer and the dummy are both trumping it, so you don't want to lead a, a suit when you can trump in both hands as declarer. Um, so we could exit a trump, we could try a low spade, or we could try um, a small club. Looking at the dummy, I probably wouldn't lead a spade because the declarer is likely to want to do something with those spades. Either they've got spade shortage or they've got spade goodies, in which case we'd be leading into them. Um, so your options are exit with a trump or lead a club. Um, it's pretty close. I would probably I would probably exit with a club. If they, the opponents have got the ace of clubs, it doesn't cost anything. If our partner's got the ace of clubs, they'll be able to win it. So, lead a club. King of clubs goes. Partner plays the ace of clubs on it. Uh, we play low. So we've lost the first four tricks, not much we can do about that. But now we're in a position where we're starting to be able to wrestle control of this hand. Um, the opponents have an opportunity. They had an opportunity just now and they've got another opportunity now to try and lead the trumps to stop us from roughing these two spades. So it all depends on how switched on this, the, these defenders are as to whether they should be leading trumps or not. Looking at this hand, it doesn't really have many options now. A club lead doesn't look sensible because the dummy will be trumping it. A spade lead doesn't look particularly sensible because, although a spade lead would not be unreasonable, but it doesn't look particularly sensible because you're leading away from an honour when you might be helping declare it. So I would probably opt for a trump now, not knowing what else to do. This hand could have played a trump in the last trick, or this hand could be playing a trump now. Basically, I think the opponent should be playing trumps at some stage. And that will harm us as the declarer, and you will see why. By them leading a trump here... That's drawing one round of trumps. We've got to take the king of hearts in hand because we don't want to rough a spade with a high heart. We need to draw the trumps and we need this king to draw one round of trumps. So the king of hearts, which fetches the ten, and a low heart. We've now won the lead. Now the only way to make this contract is to avoid two spade losers. There's two ways that can happen. We trump two spades in our hand, or the ace of spades, jack of spades, and ten nine, we manage to only lose to one of the queen or king of spades. Um, I'm going to assume the defenders know what they're doing, and in which case they should be able to stop us from doing both of those things. Our only chance now, we can't draw the trumps, if we draw the trumps we're going to lose two spades, definitely. So our best chance now is play the ace of spades, which wins the trick of course, They play a low, everyone plays low spades. And now we play the jack of spades. This hand should duck. If we got the queen of spades as well, they can take it on the next round. This hand should not be playing second hand high. I'll, I'll go back in a minute and show you what happens if they do, but for now they should play low, low spade, allowing their partner to win the queen of spades. So that's now five defensive tricks for the defenders, naturally. Now if the defenders don't do anything, we might be able to trump these two spades in our hand, but the defenders are going to lead another trump, and that removes one trump from hand, which means we can only trump one spade. So we play, they play a low trump, and that really is the killing blow. If we play low, the jack appears, we win the ace. But unfortunately for us, we now have this two spades and only one trump left. 
also the opponents are running out of spades. So what we need now is we need to trump a spade and see the other spade honor appear. We need the king of spades to appear. So if we trump a spade, they'll play low and we've got the king of spades to lose. So just look at what happens if this hand is greedy and takes their king of spades earlier. Instead of this hand winning the queen of spades on the spade trick, so we put restore the queen of spades instead, and this hand winning the king of spades in preference, so basically being greedy and quick in taking the trick. Look what happens now when we win that trump on the dummy. We play a spade, they play their queen because they have to, we trump it, and that ten of spades is now a winner. Yet another example why second hand low is the correct play. If they play the spades correctly, i.e. this hand ducks and the jack of spades is beaten by the queen here, we will end up with another spade loser and therefore six losers in total. If they don't defend correctly, we will lose only five tricks because we'll be able to trump this queen of spades out, which will then yield us the ten of spades as a winner and those trumps we can draw. So we can rough a club, draw the last trump and win that ten of spades. So it all depends on how the opponents play. The correct play really should be, this should be the end game. If the defenders play perfectly, which not every defender will, this should be the end game, which means now, low club roughed, but unfortunately for us, we've got that spade we're going to lose because the defenders have played properly. We draw the last trump as such, like that. They throw something away that isn't the king of spades, but unfortunately now we've got one winner and one loser. This hand will obviously keep on to the king of spades because they can see the dummy. So we should lose six tricks. The two spades we were worried about, the three diamonds and the one club we couldn't do anything about. The only way we might have made it is if they misdefend or if they allowed us to trump two spades, which they didn't.